When is a model steam engine not worth rebuilding? This is a perfect example of that. This engine in its original form was bought online by one of my customers. And this is part three. The original cylinder covers were not good. Made from brass and being slightly too small compounded the problem. It is time to make some proper cast iron cylinder covers and clad them using mahogany strips. These edited video clips are taken from a video I made a long time ago, and I hope that the following video answers some questions that I frequently get asked. And these parts are a couple of pieces of cast iron. And with these two pieces of cast iron, I'm going to make two cylinder covers. Cylinder covers in cast iron will be much better. Also, I need to make these slightly bigger, so when I put the cladding on the cylinders, the cladding will be inboard of the cylinder cover and look much better. So what I need to do is copy the cylinder covers that I already have. Make them a larger diameter and a slightly different design. And what you see at the moment is me just facing off the blank in the chuck. There are many ways to duplicate a cylinder cover like this, but the way I decided to do it is to take a measurement of the part that goes into the cylinder. This is two inches. And then machine a two inch recess in the piece of cast iron. That way the cylinder cover will fit into the recess and by using some Loctite 603 I can hold it in place on the cylinder cover blank then use it as a drilling jig to drill the holes for the cylinder bolts. Here I am coating the blank with some Loctite 603 and then making sure that it's spread evenly on the cylinder cover and the cast iron part. And then it's just a case of leaving it for a short while. It will be quite easy when I've finished drilling the holes to just tap these with a hammer and the brass parts will fall away. The worst case scenario if they really stuck fast would be I would have to heat it up to destroy the bond of the 603. But normally just tapping it with a hammer is the answer. Already the Loctite has grabbed on the first cylinder cover so it's over to the drilling machine to drill the holes. At this point I must say that as a musician I need to use my hands for playing the keyboard so I don't usually hold pieces of metal in my hand whilst I'm drilling them. This being an exception, it's quite a heavy piece of metal and it's a small drill. So if anything went radically wrong, the drill would break. And I'm being very careful and making sure the drill breaks through cleanly. And it's a good idea to put it on a piece of wood as you see here. So once all the holes are drilled in the cylinder cover blank, just tapping it with a hammer releases the Loctite. And then it's back to the lathe. With the blank firmly held in the chuck, the first thing I do is turn away the recess that I made earlier. Now I'm machining the opposite of a recess, which is a protrusion. This needs to be two inches in diameter to fit into the cylinder, but I will machine this much deeper than I need it. Because initially I need to use this as a spigot to hold the work in the chuck the other way round so I can machine the front surface of the cover, or the top surface should I say. So now we have a deeper than required spigot on the underside of the cylinder cover, which is held in the chuck, allowing me to machine the other surface. And here I'm facing the front of the cylinder cover after having already machined a recess using a small round nose tool. It's important to make sure that the holes that are pre-drilled in the blank end up midway from where the recess finishes to the outside edge of the cover. I must say that it's very important to remember the numbers on the hand wheels so that both of the cylinder covers are exactly the same. Now it should be clear why I made the cylinder covers a larger OD. The original OD of these cylinders is too small for the standards upon which they sit. But now as I've machined the cylinder covers to the same diameter as the standards, when I put the cladding in place, the cylinders will look much better on this engine. So that's the top end more or less taken care of. There's still a lot of work to do on this engine yet though. This next section covers the cladding of the cylinders using mahogany strips. This mahogany is 1 8 of an inch thick by around 3 8 of an inch wide. Very suitable for cladding steam engine cylinders. And here you see me marking off the position to make a saw cut. And then it's over to the bandsaw to cut just one initially. You will notice that I cut these end on. This ensures that they're actually more square than they would be by cutting them the other way. So then you try it in position and of course it fits perfectly, at which point you can gang the pieces of wood together, three or more, and run them through the bandsaw. I'm using the guide so you see that I get them all the same length. It's time to start thinking about putting the mahogany onto the cylinders. And it's quite important when you're cladding a cylinder 
to make sure that all the pieces are as upright as possible. This cylinder's a little bit on the uneven side. I'm not convinced that both ends are the same, so I might have to compromise slightly here. But before I start the cladding process, I must remove some more paint. I forgot to do this, so it's outside into the bath of cellulose thinners to get rid of the old paint. To stick the cladding on the cylinders, I'm going to use the usual medium viscosity cyanoacrylate adhesive or superglue. And I need to make a complicated part. Well, it's not really that complicated but it has an extra piece of wood. Here I'm marking off the shape of the exhaust flange, then I'm using my small Minicraft drill fitted with a drum sanding attachment to shape the part. This will follow the contours of the exhaust flange, which I haven't made yet, but I do know what the shape is going to be. The rest of the cladding process is plain sailing, with the shape piece stuck in place as square as possible. I just keep adding planks as you can see here. And in this clip you've just seen me put some cyano at each end, but off camera I'm putting some down the entire side of the piece of wood. This will stick it to the previous piece of wood and make for a very strong construction. Once you've got one plank in place, the rest of it is just a repeat operation. It can get pretty tedious doing this, so if you get bored, go away and do something else. That's what I usually do. On the video you can see that I have a cloth with me at all times. I don't know how I managed to get so much super glue on my fingers, but that's just the way it is. The last part of the cylinder cladding operation is to cut some very small pieces of mahogany to fit the gaps above and below the steam chest part of the cylinder. And here once again I'm on my bandsaw doing this, being very careful not to cut my fingers at the same time. Time I think for a health and safety warning, be very careful not to cut your fingers off and always use cyanoacrylate adhesive in a very well ventilated place. And the first cylinder is completed. Well, not quite. All the pieces of mahogany are in place at least. And you can see the two pieces of mahogany that are put in on the exhaust side of the cylinder. All that is required now is to complete the other cylinder and then spend some time outside with the orbital sander rubbing down the mahogany, after which it will be varnished, followed by fitting some brass banding around the top and bottom of the cylinder. One down and one to go. That concludes this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.